MongoDB Realm automates and simplifies the way you leverage data across all the layers of an application. It combines the Realm mobile database and sync capabilities, which we acquired last year, with the serverless platform formerly known as MongoDB Stitch to create an entirely new way of building applications without the tedious work of getting data where it needs to be. MongoDB Realm makes it trivial to regulate access to data, synchronize it between devices, act on it in real time, and integrate it into all the services you build into the rest of your application, minimizing the need to translate it from format to format. We announced our roadmap to unify MongoDB Realm a year ago, and today we're going to amaze you with what it can do. MongoDB Realm simplifies the challenges of working with data across your application. Declarative access control rules regulate access to data. Mobile Sync moves data between devices and an Atlas cluster, handling offline access without complex networking and conflict resolution code. You can act on it in real time with serverless functions, where you can integrate with all the services you need to build an application. And GraphQL gives developers a single endpoint to access exactly the data they need. Nothing more, nothing less. Alexander, as the founder of Realm, can you give us a quick review of how it fits into MongoDB Cloud? Absolutely. So much of today's data problems are, as you said, just around getting their data to where it needs to be. MongoDB Cloud makes this easy. Realm allows you to have an actual database on mobile devices, which seamlessly synchronize with the data in your Atlas cluster. This makes cross-platform development so much simpler, while opening up for powerful new capabilities. Having the data on the device makes everything fast, allowing local access with zero latency. And it ensures that your app works even when offline or when there's bad connectivity, which happens all the time for mobile apps. And since sync happens transparently in the background, you're saving yourself from writing tons of error-prone networking code. Also, since a Realm database is a real object database, it fits right into all the existing mobile frameworks, accelerating your development and removing the need for all the boilerplate code you would otherwise have to write. On top of that, Realm now includes all the functionality formerly available in MongoDB Stitch. So you also get authentication, serverless functions, triggers, and everything else you need for a fully serverless experience. MongoDB Realm extends the reach of the Atlas Data Foundation all the way across the application stack. For the enforcement agents while it is helping, we could quickly build highly performant cross-platform mobile apps that sync in real time and work even when offline. Let's get a look at the basic functionality, recording the outcomes of vessel inspections and syncing that data to Atlas. Bob and Karima are going to show this off now, right? Yep, ready when you are. And Aaron, you'll chime in to show us how everything is built, right? Gladly. When we're out on patrol, we'll select a vessel for possible inspection. With the app on my iPhone, I can search for previous boardings by me or any of the other officers. What I'm looking at now, I can find the most recent boardings are here, but I'm looking for a boat called Predator, which isn't here. Oh, it looks like it was boarded about a month ago. Let's see the details. Looks like they had no fishing license. Now I know what I'm getting into. Now I'll jump on the boat. The app was built to match the officer's workflow. As I go through my inspection, filling out the details about the vessel and crew, the activities they're engaged in, I can add details about the catch they have on board, and also note if they had any violations or if there was a seizure. I can also add an assessment of their risk level. There were no violations, so we're going to keep this as green. As I inspect everything, I can also make notes. I'm going to write the crew was friendly. I can also take pictures if I see anything worth photographing. When I'm done, I submit my report and the app saves all the information. If there was a problem with the boarding, like a safety or fisheries violation, the next officer will know before they get on that boat. I'm looking for the record on my Android tablet and it's not there. All right, when I'm in an area with no service, I put my phone in airplane mode. Then it'll avoid searching for a network and draining my battery. The app allows us to submit records even when we're out at sea and offline. Oh, got it, that makes sense. Okay, let me leave this boat and come back in range. Hey, here it is. And if I run this query, we can see the record is an atlas too. 
This is fantastic. Instead of a backlog of paper that needs to be inputted, we have the officer's reports before they even return to shore. We'd love to see it. Aaron, that must have been really hard, right? Maybe a few hundred lines of code? Actually, it's super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Well, it used to be really complex. I'd have to code multi-tenant, offline, online sync with conflict resolution. But with Realm, it amounts to... In fact, let me show you the code. These lines here, that's all, that's sync. So almost all of the app's code is devoted to, you know, the app's code. Three simple lines of code to implement bi-directional sync between a mobile device and MongoDB data in an Atlas cluster. It's amazing. If you build synchronization logic without Realm, you have to build something like you see in this diagram. And that really doesn't even cover the intricate networking code we need to write. We replace this complex architecture with MongoDB Realm. Realm Sync is now generally available. And this one feature powers a lot of capabilities in an application, like backup, cross-device and cross-platform sync, and offline capabilities that allow you to continue using an app even when not connected and automatically merge any changes back to Atlas once you're back online. And if you develop for both Android and iOS, you know that it's not easy to sync data between the two. Because of how hard it is, a lot of apps, even if they are available on iOS and Android, don't have a way to sync data across platforms. Unfortunately, that can lead to bad user experience. If a user wants to switch from one platform to another, they'll have to face losing all their data. MongoDB Realm turns this into a non-issue because syncing data across platforms is trivial. That means happier users for you. You just saw how easy it is to extend the reach of your data platform to mobile devices and forget about writing a bunch of data sync code. Aaron showed how nearly every line of the code for an app is devoted purely to implementing user-facing features. That was the warm-up. Now it's time to see what it really means to have a unified data platform taking data routing and manipulation responsibilities off of your hands. I told you how these responsibilities are hiding there in plain sight, right? So let's look more deeply at one of the features in our app that you probably didn't spend a ton of time thinking about when we first showed it to you. Bob, what do you take pictures of during inspections? We take pictures of the vessel so we can identify it the next time we board it, and we take pictures of the captain or crew and whenever we need evidence. The app allows us to attach pictures to almost every field. The more pictures we have, the better informed we can be. Makes sense. So you take plenty of pictures, but most of the time when you need to see those images, they're coming from inspections that you didn't do yourself, right? That's correct. When I'm preparing to board a boat, I might want to review images from inspections that the other officers conducted. Ingesting images and making them available to client-side applications has really been a table stakes feature for a lot of applications for decades. And it's a great example of a seemingly simple feature that has to move data through a bunch of different layers exactly the kind of plumbing MongoDB Realm is built to automate. Alexander, take us through this, okay? You got it. So, getting images from users, storing them, and then serving them back at a variety of sizes, from thumbnail to full resolution, is about as common a feature as an application can have. And back before the cloud took over, that was a thing everyone had to deal with themselves. Although a content delivery network could take some of the sting out of it, you still have to write the code that stored, resized, and served images. I mean, this is the epitome of commodity code. It's a thin logic wrapper or an image processing library and an API for talking to it. Yeah, these days, you'd never dream of writing your own infrastructure for something like that. For one thing, storing and serving image files is a job that cloud object storage is perfect for. Only, as you'll see in a moment, using cloud infrastructure and object storage in 2020 looks barely different to a developer than writing an image server and using a CDN looked back in 2000. This is an example of an architecture using cloud infrastructure and object storage for ingesting images. We have a few calls to an API, the image metadata goes to the database, then there's an image processing job that needs to be coordinated, and afterwards the image gets stored in cloud storage and the database entry for it needs to be updated. Once the full res image is stored in S3, the phone needs to delete it and only keep a thumbnail and a reference to the S3 object yet another process. All the while, your image service needs to make sure it's only taking legitimate requests, so you must be mindful of security concerns and ensure that uploads are only coming from legitimate users. 
So this is a complex, multi-step process involving the issuance of temporary credentials. The crazy thing about this is that it's a whole system of this application we have to write and maintain. And whether it's image servers or an image service, it still added complexity. Fundamentally, this is just another data prompting responsibility pretending to be a feature of our application. And now Aaron's going to show you what's basically a magic trick. Because using the power of MongoDB Cloud, he's going to make all that complexity disappear. So the last of the diagram stays the same, but most of the other service stuff is going to be replaced with Realm, which will also handle moving the image to S3 and all the other housekeeping. We still have the phone that takes a photo and stores it in an embedded Realm database. This works whether we have an internet connection or not. Wild Aid's boats are often operating miles offshore, and so officers can't rely on having a stable connection. Once the device does have an internet connection, Realm Sync takes care of getting the photo from the mobile device to Atlas. We're not planning on letting this stay there though, as you'll see in a minute. Once the image is in Atlas, the next step is to move it to S3. This process is easy to automate by adding an Atlas trigger to detect when a new photo is inserted. Let me show you the code. This is a trigger. Whenever a new photo appears in Atlas, it calls a function upload image to S3, which stores the image in S3. Once that function returns with the URL for the image from S3, it then adds the URL to the Atlas document and deletes the binary image in the document. The Atlas document then automatically syncs back to the mobile device, freeing up storage space. And this is the Realm function the trigger called. MongoDB Realm has built-in integration with AWS services like S3, and so the function to put the image in the S3 bucket is pretty short. Overall, it's really not a lot. We were able to work with the images natively on the mobile platforms, relying on Realm Mobile Sync with its built-in authentication and access control to get the image data into Atlas without needing to implement sync and deal with offline edge cases. Realm's triggers let us in react the instant new images appeared in Atlas, and serverless functions, which now have the ability to include library code with dependency resolution, gave us an integration point to move the images to Amazon S3. The flexibility of the document model let us replace binary image data with S3 URL references in the same document, which means that Realm Mobile Sync also took care of purging the unnecessary binary data from the mobile devices while keeping the client code drop dead simple. One more thing. If I want to use an NPM package inside one of these functions, that's also not possible with dependencies for Atlas functions. I just upload it here and use it in my function. Very cool. So we've extended the reach of our data foundation to the mobile environment. But the picture isn't complete until we've done the same for web applications and figured out how to easily expose data to external consumers. For something like that, MongoDB Realm includes a GraphQL service. This makes it easy to get up and running with GraphQL, the groundbreaking API query language that gives developers a single endpoint to access exactly the data they need. Nothing more, nothing less. Lucky for us, Realm allows us to automatically sign up a GraphQL API to let us expose the data we want to share. Here, I've created the second Realm app and pointed at the same cluster. Over here, I can generate a schema, and then in the GraphQL section, I can download the schema for my application. And I can even test out my GraphQL interface in this explorer. And just like that, see, I can access the data. And because it's all in Realm, I can rest assured knowing the Realm rules I have in place will control data authorization. Nobody will see any data they're not authorized to. Just like the Realm mobile database and mobile sync gives the mobile developers the best way to work with data on mobile device, GraphQL gives web developers the best way to work with data in a web application. On a last note, there's a lot more that has happened on the Realm mobile database side. We have really doubled down on improving the database itself with the release of an all new storage engine, improved query capabilities, a Raspberry Pi release for IoT use cases, open sourcing the sync client, and much more. So check it out.